The Church of Scientology is once again proving why it's such a contentious organisation. Two months ago, a court found one of its members, Hollywood actor Danny Masterson, guilty of multiple rapes. As intolerable as that is, the case has also exposed the extraordinary tactics the church used to protect its star recruit and how it cruelly attempted to silence his victims. Since then, there have been more revelations about life inside Scientology, accusations of serious abuses and mob-style operations and attacks. As you'll see, though, taking on an organisation as bullying and belligerent as Scientology comes at a cost. Breaking news now, an actor in Hollywood convicted of rape. A jury has found Danny Masterson guilty of two counts of rape. That's right, actor Danny Masterson has been found guilty on... This is trial and conviction of Hollywood actor Danny Masterson for the rape of two women has made headlines around the world. After the guilty verdicts came in, Masterson was immediately handcuffed and sent to jail. For not only was he on trial, but so too was the powerful Church of Scientology. Masterson was one of the most visible celebrity Scientologists. All the accusers are former members. Scientology played a huge role in this trial. Danny Masterson was preying on Scientologist women in part because he knew the church would protect him. A celebrated Scientologist, actor Danny Masterson, was a star of the hit sitcom That 70s Show. You need to learn to keep your hands off me. Me? You're the one who can't keep her tongue to herself. While his character was hip and funny, off camera, Masterson was a rapist who in 2003 drugged two women before violently sexually assaulting them, Jackie. one at gunpoint. I'm never going to be the guy who says the right thing at the right time, OK? Journalist Tony Ortega broke the story, first publishing the extraordinary allegations back in 2017. To me, the primary story has been what these women have gone through. I mean, at so many turns, these women have had to fight for this justice, and they've kept their dignity through all of it. Taking on Masterson meant the women were taking on the mighty billion-dollar Scientology church. Welcome to church. As far as religions go, Scientology is the new kid on the block, born from the imagination of American science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard in the 1950s. He would have it that 75 million years ago, humans were invaded by destructive and dangerous alien souls. Only by Scientology can we exorcise them through costly personality testing, auditing and self-help courses. Is this a form of psychoanalysis? No, psychoanalysis, they lay back. Don't, don't associate Scientology with such people. That, that's terrible, that, that's bad manners. After many years and much money, those most deserving are saved, deemed clear of bad alien energy. It's the peak that every good Scientologist strives for. And according to Tony, Hubbard's very calculated grand plan to link his religion to celebrities has also helped bring in the money. He literally put bounties on the heads of celebrities and asked his members to bring them in. They didn't have very much success at first. Up your nose with a rubber hose. But then in the 1970s, they started to get people like John Travolta and Kirstie Alley. In the 1980s, they got Tom Cruise. <laughs> and they knew that this was a key to getting a better you know, public image for Scientology. With the Masterson conviction, that public image is taking a battering. It was never a question for me that it was the right thing to do to testify. Former Scientologist Claire Headley was the prosecution's star witness in the Masterson rape trial. After 30 years in the church, her expertise was called on to expose to the court the disturbing inner workings of Scientology. What were some of the tactics you talked about in the court? 
the policies that um, forbid Scientologists from reporting to law enforcement, um, the consequences um, for a Scientologist if they were to violate that, where Scientology will then um, work systematically to destroy your life, your family, your livelihood, and silence you. So you go to the police to report a crime or a rape in particular. What happens to you then? It is a high crime to do so. Initially, the women who were raped by Masterson, who were also Scientologists, reported the attacks to the church. The shocking response was classic Scientology methodology. The women were victim shamed and predictably forbidden from reporting to police. Eventually they did, but it would take a staggering 12 years before the allegations were investigated by authorities. They not only alleged that they were raped and that the church encouraged them not to come forward, but then when they did come forward in 2016, they claim that they've been harassed continually. Why would Scientology turn against these women? If somebody is, you know, the victim of crime, they're made to believe that they're at fault for it. The testimony of Claire, with the support of husband Mark, was a pivotal point in the trial. As once high-ranking Scientology officials turned whistleblowers, they packed a punch. Claire was able to decipher for the jury the church's own records. She uncovered a paper trail that showed the church was doing all it could to protect Danny Masterson. It was very important because particularly in this case, there were Scientology reports that indicated these crimes had been reported immediately when they happened. However, the reports were laden with the language of Scientology that had to be decoded in such a way that anybody could understand what took place. And that was the role that I played. Was there specific evidence that in this case, the church had knowledge of these rapes and covered them up? 100%. They actively coached and convinced the victims to when they did report things to not use certain words and not use certain terminology and not to say the R word and not to mention the firearm and all these sort of things all kind of add up to you guys were trying to brush this under the rug, not that you were trying to uh, spiritually enlighten anybody along the way. Is this the most significant step towards the church becoming accountable, in the eyes of the law at least? The coverage has been devastating. The testimony has been brutal. But Tara, I'm still waiting to see if there are any government agencies willing to do something. Uh, I don't know how much longer we're gonna have to wait for a more serious probe of Scientology and the way that it's victimizing people. Those victims may feel they have a stronger voice. Now Scientology has been exposed through the Masterson rape trial. But as you'll see, for those disaffected by the church, the first and greatest challenge remains getting out. Oh my gosh, I was like, I was panicking, but I couldn't let anybody see me. So you had one chance at this? Yes, yeah, that was it. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. Okay, day two, being followed by a different vehicle, and I've tried to ditch them three times. And... By daring to leave it, Valerie Haney has made the Church of Scientology very angry. And I've just spent the last half an hour trying to lose him. In retaliation, she says she is often followed and harassed. To further intimidate her, her house has been broken into. Oh, are you the one who broke into the gate? The last... Yes, you remember me. All this from a church that was once her entire existence. I was born into it, so there was no, there was no like outside schooling, outside life, outside friends, outside anything. You're completely shut out from the world, and yeah, it's it's that's the definition of a cult. It's definitely all of that. Valerie's memories shine a light on life within Scientology. When she was just six, she was made to work, 
doing all of the dishes for 300 people in the cafeteria and mopping and sweeping the floor and I had to clean the dumpsters and there was maggots in the dumpsters and if you didn't work, then you would be sent to interrogation. If hard labor seems cruel for children so young, the multi-life contracts they were made to sign for almost everything are insane. At what stage did it cross your mind that signing a billion year contract was a ludicrous notion? Well, <laughs> well, signing a billion year contract wasn't ludicrous at all to me when I was eight years old, believing in Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. This is part of the Church of Scientology International. We produce all the audiovisual used throughout the church. Even as an adult, Valerie was unaware she was living in a parallel universe. Overworked, underpaid, and denied the freedom to even leave. Until she met visiting actors hired to make training videos for parishioners. When did you decide that you needed to get out? What made you decide? So it was the first time that I had, like, interaction with you know, with real people. <laughs> so, so, you know, they would come and ask me, like, is it true that you work from like 8 a.m. to midnight? And is it true that you get paid $47 a week? Yeah. And I was like, wow, wait a second. This is not right at all. So that was kind of when I was like, okay, yeah, I need to go. The day she left, in 2016, Valerie made a split-second decision, spurred on by a fast, disappearing, but high-risk opportunity. So how did you get out? When I found out that there was, um, it was the last day that there was going to be any normal people coming onto the property, and I totally freaked out. I, I was like, I have, I, this is my last chance. I have to go. Oh my gosh, I was like, I was panicking. There was a section um, in the parking lot where there wasn't any cameras. And so I went to that section and there was four cars or five cars and I checked each car and one was unlocked and, and I was like, okay, great. And then I popped the trunk and I was like, this is, this is it, the one car. Okay, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're going. So I tried to squeeze into the, the trunk of the car, close the trunk of the car. And then I heard my name, like they were looking for me already. And I was like, please don't, don't pop the trunk. Please don't pop the trunk. Please don't pop the trunk. If you had been caught, at that time, what would have happened to you? I would have been um, put on 24-hour watch and um, never let out of anyone's sight ever again. So you had one chance at this? Yeah, that was it. It's, yeah, it's, it's insane. It's crazy. Incredibly, the car got through security with Valerie in the boot for the next two hours. That's how I, I escaped, and, and I still don't know what the guy's name was to this day that, that helped me. But when he discovered you there, he must have got the shock of his life. He, like, leaped back about seven, ten feet. Oh, my God! Like, oh, my God, you were in there this whole time? And are you OK? Oh, my gosh! And he was like, are you? Are you okay? It's unthinkable that such desperate lengths are needed to leave a church you no longer believe in. But sadly, simply walking away is not an option, as Mark and Claire Headley also know. Their escapes in 2005 could also be the stuff of Hollywood. Why did you guys have to escape? Why couldn't you just leave, walk out the door? Unless you have um, prior authorization to leave the property, you are not allowed to just come and go as you wish. So when I decided to leave, I'm just like, I'm out of here, I'm leaving. And in the course of me driving down the highway, they followed me with an SUV and ran me off the road on the motorcycle. And that's actually the only reason that I was able to escape is because when they did that, Somebody that was driving down the highway witnessed it and then called the police. Without the help of the police, I would, I would very likely still be there to this day. 
Wow. How did you get out of their clutches, Claire? <laughs> well, um, I concocted this um, need to leave the property. Um, even then, I had a security escort, so I managed to quite literally run away from this person jump into a taxi. I made the mistake of turning on the phone when I was heading to the bus station, and they used that to see the direction I was heading and therefore sent four staff members to intercept me. Um, in my mind, I decided if they haul me out of here, I'm going to scream. And I, I had no faith, no hope. I just, you know, I, I knew that if I didn't succeed, I would never see Mark again. Valerie Haney's freedom came with a false start. After making her dramatic escape in the boot of a stranger's car, her father, still a Scientologist at the time, insisted she return. If you could just let me go, I will sign whatever you need me to sign. I would never, ever say anything bad about Scientology. If she was to leave, he wanted it to be on the church's terms which would require her to sign a contract and make a positive video about Scientology. Valerie's deprogramming was meant to take two weeks. They held her for three months. What did they want you to say? What did they get you to say? They wanted me to say how amazing it was and how I was never held against my will and I, I was never abused at all and I loved it there and it was amazing. It was like a Disneyland paradise. Are you joking? Like I'm literally in a room with an armed guard and five people outside the room. You have my passport, you have my ID. I have nothing on me. I can't do anything. But escaping to the real world is no protection against this bulletproof institution as Valerie discovered when she tried to sue it, forced back to the compound once more to negotiate with her alleged abusers. You are making this woman go inside of the place that she was abused, trafficked, kidnapped, inside, back into the belly of the beast. Hello and welcome. You've probably heard of Scientology. He may not show it, but the supreme leader of Scientology, David Miscavige, is under immense pressure. The church's reputation is taking a beating, with multiple court cases hearing complaints of terrible abuses from former followers. But Miscavige has been missing in action, found by a judge to have actively concealed his whereabouts to evade taking the stand. Journalist Tony Ortega has been covering the bizarre developments. No doubt, though, he is still running the show. Oh, there's no doubt he's still running the show. He's not missing. He's just hiding from process servers. It's pretty embarrassing for Scientology, I think. Quite extraordinary behaviour from Scientology's Pope, though accountability has never really been their thing. But Valerie Haney is the face of a growing legal fight back suing the church for human trafficking, kidnapping, harassment, stalking, and the violation of child labor laws. In Scientology, you have taken on a mighty opponent. Do you feel like you're still standing? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit rough at times, for sure. They've tried to make it as rough as possible, but um, I'm not gonna let that stop me. Inconceivably, Valerie's first legal hurdle has been to try to overturn the contracts she was made to sign while in Scientology. Amongst the many over her 37 years in the church, she signed her first when she was just eight years old. It was a billion year pledge. All of the, the laws and, and, and the documentation and everything that they're making me sign aren't binding in this, in the real world, because I was a child when I joined this cult. But the real world is judging otherwise, with courts claiming they can do no else. Religious freedom means the contracts, no matter how long or onerous, cannot be questioned by the law. Can you explain to me how these contracts can actually be considered legitimate in a court of law? That's a great question. What's happening is that 
the courts are saying under our First Amendment that they can't read into or in any way assert the rule of law into what this quote unquote religion believes, which we're not asking them to do. We're not asking them to do that. Guy D'Andrea is Valerie's attorney. He is asking the courts to judge what Scientology does, not what it thinks. You can believe in human sacrifice. If that's what you believe, you can believe that. You can't commit that act, right? You can't do that. And that's all we're saying here. But the courts, for whatever reason, in Val's case, are refusing to see that or refusing to look at it, at least at this stage. In other cases, judges have said their hands are tied. Do you agree with that? No, their hands are not tied. You don't have to look at the belief system. But to resolve the case, the court has ordered Valerie to return to the lion's den, to enter Scientology's internal arbitration process, allowing the church to be its own judge and jury. How let down do you feel by the legal system? I was definitely um, shocked when, um, when I was told to go back into their grips. I was shocked when I was told that I had to do that. Valerie will subject herself to arbitration if it means she might eventually get to a proper court. But whistleblower Claire Headley says judges are being hoodwinked. Scientology's arbitration has nothing to do with their religious beliefs. Rather, it's a contrived legal strategy. There is no such thing as arbitration. It is not Hubbard policy. It is not Scientology policy. It is simply an effort by Scientology to cover up more crimes. If we can just get into the litigation, right? If we can start taking depositions, right? Interviewing their people on the record, getting the documents, getting the videos, we will truly expose to the world, which Scientology does not want, what's really happening inside of those armed doors. And I mean armed. I believe this building on the corner may be where Shelly lives. Just here? Yeah, right here. Well, that's just too frustratingly close. I, I know. Scientology does secrecy better than anyone. Its most confounding and enduring mystery is the whereabouts of Shelly Miscavige, David's missing wife, not seen publicly for nearly two decades. In 2019, Tony Ortega and I travelled to Twin Peaks, California, to the compound where it's believed the one-time high priestess of the church has been kept, out of sight since 2006. Hello. We'd like to talk to you about Shelley Miscavige. Hello. If you can see us, please come out. We'd like to talk to you. Has anything changed since you and I went looking for her? Uh, there's been some new information, but generally it's the same situation as when you and I went up to the uh, compound there. I still fully believe she's there. I've seen some records that suggest she is. Just a month and a half ago, this photo of Shelley surfaced. It was taken when she managed to renew her driver's license in 2010. Documents also confirm the LAPD met with Shelley and an attorney for Scientology in 2013. But since then, nothing, apart from statements from the church denying Shelley is missing. They don't say where she is, only that she's working on a special project. I think she's still cut off from the rest of the world. I think she's cut off from her own family. And, you know, the law enforcement just does not seem interested in the fact that David Miscavige has managed to banish his wife to a small mountain compound for 18 years now. Do you think that Shelley would leave if she could? I mean, do you think, are you, are you sure that this isn't her choice? I'm not sure it's not her choice, but until I hear Shelley say that she wants to stay there, I guarantee you she's thought about leaving and she's thought about what life could be on the outside and she should have that choice. You are a Scientologist. You are a mindless robot. The great hope is that the recent conviction of Scientologist and actor Danny Masterson 
facing 30 years in jail for multiple rapes changes everything. That once and for all, Scientology will be unmasked, allowing more and more victims to sue the church for their suffering. In the meantime, Valerie Haney's advice is simple, steer clear. What warning would you give others about Scientology? I would say don't even think about it. And I would say run for the hills. Do not get involved at all whatsoever. You must feel like you're sort of betraying yourself sometimes to talk out about it. Well, yeah, it's going against everything I was ever taught. It's, it's, I'm like sw dripping with sweat right now. Like I, it, it t but I know that it's right. And I know that I, you know, it's the truth. So I have to, you know, help others. And I have to make sure that it's, it's, it's not going to harm other people. We sent the Church of Scientology a series of questions, some of which they've responded to, along with various legal threats. You can read what they say on our website, but predictably they completely ignored our inquiries about the whereabouts of Shelley Miscavige and our request to see and speak to her. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.